When we start thinking about industrial ecology and scientific ecology, one of the first concepts that comes to mind is that of trophic networks or food chain. When used in economic activities, it's about linking the various economic agents so that the waste from some become the resources of others. So we use the analogy with the biosphere and we talk about industrial biosphere. Kallenborg was one of the very first trial for industrial ecology and it's become a global reference now and industrial ecology would have never been the same hadn't we discovered the uh, uh, exemplary application of these uh, uh, principles so it's all about recycling the waste from neighboring activities to create a genuine industrial ecosystem in which each company uses the waste from others. Kallenborg is a small city in Denmark and it's one of the few harbors accessible all year round in the North Hemisphere. So they sell uh, steam to Statoil which sells it, it's wastewater that they use as um, cooling. The local power station also sells to Novo Nordisk to JPROC building plaster insulation material and to the municipality that uses it for their uh, urban heating system. The water is, which is lukewarm is also used by a fish farm which is located and then there is the desulfurization unit that provides chips into JPROC that no longer needs to procure it from Spain. Ashes are also used by a plant that produces vanadium and nickel. So the industrial estate in Kallenberg moved from the traditional model to a circular model in which all production units are interconnected, but this symbiosis was not achieved uh, overnight. It all started when Statoil uh, set up business in Kallenborg in the 60s. They signed an agreement with the municipality for their water supply because they really had a water resource problem. Then the company talked to other suppliers as it was developing and they signed partnerships with other industrial production sites based locally. Other projects appeared and little by little many cooperations emerged, supply of steam, use of uh, excess of water, excess of gas, etc. And today 26 companies are working hand in hand with the municipality and they include fish farms fa and uh, traditional farms which are supplied in heat and water. This Kallenborg symbiosis emerged with, from the will of uh, companies, but it has always been supported by local authority and it's based on transparency, uh, ongoing communication between participants which have set up business one to ne next to one another. It allows all members to share material, water, energy, making a profit for each and every one of them. The ecosystemic dimension of the synergy of these exchanges was noticed lately at the end of the 80s. After 20 years, it had been operating. operating. G. Christensen, um, former manager of the Novo Nordisk uh, site, considers that this is a non-project carried out by a non-organization. Other entities also developed with this group. So beyond the economic profit, involved in waste transfer, all partners are seeing joint perspective for development. They're developing strategies to substitute material, but also mutualization 
uh, synergies to collect and enhance the value of certain waste, for instance. And they now are planning to move to renewable energy for the entire industrial park. If this substitution potential is important, as shown in this graph, which is difficult to read because of the large number of transfers and exchanges which are possible, there are still many blocking points for the development of industrial symbiosis. These are non-redundant, so an industrial ecosystem has no redundancy, unlike the real e ecosystem in nature. In true ecosystems, functional groups are made up of a large number of species, not all using the same resources, and which can be used as resources for many other species, which are part of other functional groups. In industrial ecology, each functional group is made up of a small number of companies, and sometimes just one company. So there is is a lack of flexibility in the exchanges linked to the number of companies in the area and linked to the nature of infrastructure to ensure uh, the um, transportation from one industry to the other. The second blocking point is that if one partner fails, if one partner fails, closes down, goes on strike. It's the entire system which can be modified. And then we can see that symbiosis is easier when partners are close to one another. Last problem, the commercial relationship between partners. It's difficult to share resources when these resources do not have a given value for all the partners. The setting up of industrial ecology is not obvious. Maybe it's a utopia because the mature system that we've seen before does not really exist in nature. Otherwise, we would not have coal and oil. In the case of Kallenborg, it's something very rare. There were a large number of historical, geographical uh, factors that led to the development of this symbiosis. But the implementation of industrial parks is booming, especially in China and in Asia beyond the economic conditions that can be uh, good, that, that it takes some encouragement at social, political, institutional level in order to emerge operating networks. And the analogy with biomimetism and with uh, ecology allows challenging the disruptions that we need to introduce in order to make things move forward. Maybe now we need to move towards a more dynamic dimension of ecology in, so that technological e efficacy means economic efficacy.